Hello, everybody. Hello. Good this, to see you here again. This is Liron, and I'm Gal. Hi. And we're founders of Love Made Simple. And uh, we're doing our weekly uh, Wednesday live broadcast here mm -hmm. with you. Yeah. Happy holidays. Happy holiday season. Um, yeah, so and today we would like to talk about um, why the holidays time can be hard on the relationship. What's the reason for that and what you can do about it? Yeah, I mean, we're starting a new month, the month of December, and our main topic will be rituals and routines because, you know, there's so many family rituals that are happening around the holidays and and it's time to look at those things. And the, the topic today, like Leon said, is what makes uh, the holidays so stressful mm -hmm. and what you can do about it. Right. And I think one of the first things to, to start with that is that... Um, I think most of us have this concept that the holidays, you know, when the holidays are coming, we have this anticipation or this longing of like, oh, it's going to be a fun time, more time off, right? Thanksgiving and then Christmas and New Year, more time off for most people from work. And we're going to just kind of meet with the family and kind of relax some more and, and do less. And we get all this media also, like all the Christmas songs and everything. And Movies. so it all... It all makes us like feel like, oh, it's going to be so fun and easy and going and great. Right. And the truth is, it's basically a fantasy. It's a cultural fantasy that we are having. That um, holidays are great and wonderful and perfect. And we're all happy families that's going to celebrate and enjoy each other. In simple, maybe one word, I can say bullshit. That's not <laughs> the way it's happened. Almost in any family. Um, most couples that I worked with um, had struggles, had fights, disagreements, a lot of stuff came up which we're going to talk about them more. So just to remember the fact that our culture, uh, our culture being impacted by the media and uh, the, the, the uh, movies that we are watching and the series that we are watching and, and we all have a fantasy. Mm -hmm. And it's a time to basically break that fantasy into small details and understand why it's actually not working and maybe how possibly to make it work. Yeah, and also for a lot of people, then they feel bad. They feel like, oh, it's just for me that I'm not having so much fun or as much fun as I wanted to. Or there's some, sometimes it's a little bit disappointment, sometimes a lot of disappointment or fights happening between couples and challenges. And, and, and they, people blame themselves instead of understanding it's not about you. Is, it is a stressful time of the year for most people, some a little bit, some a lot, but it is some stress that's, that's happening and we want to give you some of the ideas of the reasons why, right? And then talk about what you can do about it, that you do it better. Right. So I think one thing is that, you know, one reason is that um, when we think about going to, the fam to, to our family, it brings up a lot of history for us mm -hmm. right like when we when you think about time with our family it brings up all of our memories of like how was also our childhood with with our family maybe today you're hosting you know these days like when if you're more an adult maybe you're the one who's hosting the family or maybe you are going into to to your parents or something like that a lot of time you will immediately bring up into your consciousness memories of how it was in the in the past like if your past was great and you felt like the holidays was a good time in your family that that will bring positive memories and it'll be great and it'll be not stressful and it'll be like something you will look forward and enjoy but for a lot of people you know for for most of us there's some kind of a mix you know there's some good stuff about it but also some challenges around it i mean i know i've i've worked with a the couple in which um uh, we talked to to one of them and one of the partners was saying you know, uh, on Thanksgiving morning, I realized I was pretty grumpy. Or well, my partner actually told me, you're grumpy, go take a walk. You know, and and I I, I didn't even notice that until then. But then now that we're talking and we're exp we explore that together, you know, he said, you know, I realized, you know, when I was growing up in my family, it wasn't a fun time, you know, on the holidays. You know, I never got the, the presents that I wanted. It didn't feel like very connected to what's going on in our family. We didn't feel connected together. We we're not, we weren't very close. And so he realized that now when I look forward into the, the holidays, immediately what comes up is this pattern of history in which like it wasn't, it didn't feel like a nourishing experience. Another aspect of it can be is the longing or the hope to feel something you never felt actually in your life. To feel connected, to feel loved, to feel seen, to feel understood, 
um, to feel cared for. So we come with an expectations to the holiday, to the dinner, to the feast, and the opposite happen. So automatically we get disappointed. And the tricky thing is that mostly we know in advance that it's not going to be so pleasant and so fun, but we still have the hope, we still have the fantasy, we still want to fix, to repair something that's maybe happened in the past or in many families never actually happened, but we very much longing for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, our desires in our family are so powerful, right? right? Like we want to feel seen, we want to feel heard, we want to feel loved. Want to feel accepted you know that we, we all know that our relationship with our parents and our family and our siblings have a huge impact on us and so all of those longings get evoked when we come to to the holidays and sometimes you you know it, it, you do get that experience and sometimes you don't and when you don't it's then it feels very disappointing and, and hurtful just like leon is saying right so, so sometimes there there is almost like um an internal preparation that's happened as you said with your client is that, oh, the holiday season is coming, oh, I'm going to be with my family. And for a whole month, some people feel off, feel like, oh, that's not going to be such a good experience, that's going to be really difficult. And the way it show up, usually it's in the relationship, is with our partners, because we feel safe with our partners. We've been together maybe for a few months, maybe for a few years or many years, and we give ourselves permission to be grumpy with the people we love the most. Right. So it gets really um, hard to go through the holiday season for some people, for some couples, because what it evokes within us is our own experience with our own families and not necessarily what's happened between us as a couple, which it can and we will talk about in a moment, but for now, just like, yeah, how you grew up and the way you celebrated holidays with your family is a big impact on your relationship. Another reason I think is that we have there's so many requests and demands and needs from so many different people, right? Like, you know, your parents might want something uh, from, from the holidays, right? Like if you have older kids, your kids might want something, you know, your siblings might want something. So, you know, you and your partner have different needs. And so there's so many people trying to get their needs met to get there. And it's always a recipe for challenges and conflict and friction. And so right. it's not easy to satisfy everybody. Like, who do you go to and who, where do you spend more, more time and what do you do there? All of this become questions that we talk about a lot. Right. And another really important point is expectations. There are a lot of expectations that we experience and feel and expectations from the family. Like what kind of food we are going to have. Some family has the traditional exact food every holiday and some other being more creative. But then you have to be a cook, you have to perform, you have to show up. Um, Christmas, there is the whole gift thing. There are so much charge around the gift. That's what gifts I'm going to buy, to who, how much I'm going to spend, what they're going to think about that, what they're going to give me, to gift me. I'm going to like it. Do they really consider me? They did not consider me. How much they really um, took the time to consult with others about what they want. So it brings so much challenges within ourselves, just the expectation aspect of the holiday. Right. And another aspect that I think most people don't uh, recognize is that when you go to visit with your family, automatically, even without noticing it, you go to the same role that you used to play in your family when you're growing up. Mm -hmm. So you know, if you're growing up in a family, you know, if let's say, for example, you have a few kids, let's say three kids in your family, a lot of time each person, you know, take a certain role in the family. Like one person is the peacemaker, the other one is the one who connects everybody together, the, the other one is the responsible one who takes care of everything, you know, or the other one is like just the, the younger one that everybody kind of thinks that they need to take care of, you know, because they're not independent enough. So there's many roles that we take in our family. Um, and those roles, when we grow up, they're limiting because we usually we develop, we're, we're a different person, we're a more mature person, adult person, we're, our life is more full. And then we come into our family and sometimes in a subtle way, we just go back to that same role, right? And that could be you know, hard for us you know, to, to suddenly feel like, oh, I'm not feeling so, so great in this role that now feeling confining. Or sometimes, you know, I, I talked to, that, to, to, to one person I was working with, sometimes it's actually more visible to your partner. You know, like you, you just do what you do with your family, but your partner says, oh, that's interesting, you know, when you go to your family, suddenly you don't really speak your mind, right? 
or, or suddenly you just make sure everybody's okay. You know, it's kind of you forget about yourself. And so we fall into those roles without knowing that we do. Yeah. I have a couple that I worked with that um, around the holidays, um, when they went to um, the person, the guy, um, family, she noticed that he's putting his hat, hat on his head and most time he's just sitting like that and not having eye contact with his family members. And she asked him, what's going on? What is it about? He said, I don't know, that's what I always did. Just sitting, you know, like that and not sharing much about myself. No one really cares about me, so why should I share? So there is something there about um, bringing the old roles into the present moment that's happened to many people and many couples in general. Right. Another point I want to bring is more cultural aspect. That some couples coming from different cultures and they celebrate holidays differently, or the beliefs about the holidays is different. Or, or just the way they interact with the family, right. you know, like kind of what kind of communication you have with them and about what is right. different. Yeah, or, or how to do things, how many members of the family are invited, how much food there is. We can just tell you in our families there is like a, you know, a, a huge difference. Like my family, my mom will cook, I don't know, basically for an army, that she can feed an army in our house. That's more and more um, different dishes and flavors, and it's almost like there is no room in the table. Gal's family, um, he's known as like much more in the... Um, Petite size, just kind of like little small not things. Not waste. Yeah, to Don't, not waste anything. Not waste things. Yeah, yeah, to just make sure that everyone has just enough and that's really it. So when she came to my family, she's always, always like, I'm never going to invite them. They're going to judge me. I cannot cook so well. I just prefer to invite them only for a tea and maybe a, a, a cake and that's it. So in the beginning of our relationship, that was a little bit of a challenge itself. A few challenges. One, um, my family always kind of like inviting it was more fun to come to my family because there is more food, there is more people. But the problem with it that it was more loud and definitely more people being invited and some spontaneous people that just like were around and didn't have to, you know, someone to make the holiday with, they were always invited. And um, when Gal was kind of like joining me to the holidays, which what we did most of the time, he got overwhelmed. It was just too much for him, too much people, too much noises, too much sounds. And he was telling me like, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to another room. I think I need to rest and maybe read a book. And for me, it was just like, how you can really like leave the party and go to another room and, and separate yourself? Like, first of all, what my family would think about you. And second of all, who you are, like, what are you? Like, how, how you can really, like, how can you think like that? Human. <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> just a different type of view, <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it was very um, interesting in the beginning because we did had fights about it and we had hard time to come to agreement. But over the years, we've been together for 18 years. Um, I learned that it's actually overwhelming for him that he's a different type of human being that he cannot be around so many people. He has two cousins. I have 40. It's not really possible for him to just get used to be with 40 people not every time, or, or 20 people for dinner, because it's like, but no one really talk with each other. I'm just like, well, we are talking with each other. Like, no, you're yelling at each other. So we have totally different culture, even though we are both from Israel. Um, and, and we needed to find a way to respect each other's needs. And we found a way to compromise. So Gal takes some time off when he feels overwhelmed and when he feels just um, rested enough, he's coming back, and my family already knows God is in the room, they're making jokes about it, we're all laughing about it, and it's just part of what it is. Just like it's a different human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so there's all these reasons already, you know, like we, we, we talked about, about why that could be stressful. So I hope that by now, you don't feel bad if, if you feel like some of the holidays are stressful. You realize, yeah, this, the, there are a lot of reasons. It makes sense that, that it will be stressful. And so maybe right. maybe we'll turn towards right, right. now, of like saying like, okay, so what, what, what can, can you do about it? How can you navigate it in, in a little less stressful way for this holiday season? Right. Right. Yeah. And I think also, actually, maybe before we go there, I want to add, um, there's something happens also this holiday season, you know, which all the situation, the political situation, the stuff situation is also in the country. Like this is also very, we're in a very polarized environment right now. Mm -hmm. 
Right? So a lot of families, they just try to avoid talking about politics or talking about COVID and vaccinations and all that stuff. This is, this is a unique time, I think, in which, at least in the United States, there's so much tension around certain topics that you know, that also makes the, the experience uh, stressful. Because if your family could have different ideas, then, then you, you might be in a stressful situation with them. So we want to invite you to, to think what kind of an experience would you like to have for yourself and for your partner? How would you like to feel? How would you like to be? What role would you like to take? Would you like to take the old roles that you used to take since childhood? Or maybe you're willing to take a different type of role? And how, can, how your partner can participate in that? How they can be there with you? So thinking first of all about the, the experience that you want to have and share it with your partner. Mm. Talk about it, not just like think to yourself and then go to your family and do whatever. It's like, oh, you know, I'm really um, stressful about it and I'm already exhausted without really being there. I really want to feel different. I want to feel more energized. I want to feel more connected. So what can I do? Maybe I can go for a run in the morning. Maybe I can um, listen to music. Maybe I can... Um, connect with my friends, whatever will help you to feel the way you want to feel. So mm -hmm. think about it in advance. Yeah, I mean, I think the point is that most people talk about the logistics, like right. how many days we're going to spend in which family and what we're going to do, etc., and what activities we're going to do. What's really important is the experience you want to have. So mm -hmm. that's the emphasis that Liron is making. It's like talk to each other, like this holiday season, I just wanted, for example, just be relaxed time with my family, try to not bring anything up and not make it stressful. Okay, so that's the experience you're after, then your partner can support you. Or like, I really wanna feel closer, more connected, so I actually wanna have potential deeper conversations with my family. Okay, so now your partner knows and both of you can try to focus on it and see how you can support each other in that process. So that's the, that's the difference, it's like talking about the experience versus the logistics. Yeah, also ask your partner, what what is it like for them to join you if you're going to your family um to be with you there mm -hmm. i had a couple that i worked with that's the um like a heterosexual couple that's the woman hate her partner's family she's just like did not get along with anyone she felt rejected by them she felt unseen she felt basically miserable but it's kind of like they had kids and she had to go and we talked in the session, okay, what would you like to feel and how your partner can support you feeling that? What can you do, what you can boast you to make sure that you stay in presence, that you don't feel reject, that you feel in your body and it may not be the best, like wonderful experience of your life, but at least it may not be the worst. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like ask each other, what do you both need? Like if it's your family, what do you need? You know, what kind of support you need from your partner? Maybe you said to your partner, I really need you not to talk about politics when we're with my family. Okay. I mean, it's important. It's really important to honor. You're going into a different culture, into someone else's family. You've got to try to fit in with that, within that culture. But also if your other partner is visiting, like your own saying, like, what is it that you need over there? Like, do you need time off for yourself? You know, like I take time off in the, in the room for myself, right? right. Do you need um, do you need just time just the two of you? Do you need your partner to sit next to you, for example, hold your hand, you know, or just kind of acknowledge you more? Yeah. One point that you're saying is important because some couples um, actually don't have time, energy, or money to take vacations through the year, and that holiday time it's their time to take a vacation, but then they have to spend it with their family, and they don't really have a quality time between themselves. So the whole time they being with the family or with their kids there. And they're missing each other. And that's the only opportunity for them to connect. So think about in advance and talk about your needs, your own needs and the relationship need and how you can fulfill it. Maybe you're just asking the parents one night to watch the kids and you go out and you do something for your relationship. It has to be important and, and part of the agreement that you're setting up for yourself and for the family. And finally, I want to say, just be kind with yourself and be kind with your partner, with your relationship. Realize that it is a stressful time. It is a vulnerable time for, for everybody. You know, the holidays, meeting the family, like we talked about. And so if friction comes up, if challenges come up, just be kind towards, you, to, towards yourself and towards the other person. And realize, yes, it's just, it's the holidays. It's not you. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about your partner. It's not about your relationship. It's the situation. And I will actually recommend if 
big things coming up, which usually in holidays, big things of relationship coming up, is to postpone it. Postpone the conversation, say, yes, it's a big deal between us. Let's talk about it after the holiday. I know it's hard, but the couples that were able to do it, they survived the holiday in a much better way. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you're going to be in a fight, you're going to be in a negative cycle, and you won't talk with each other the whole time, or it'll be just really um, hard atmosphere to be with each other. So just say, okay, if we know we have a problem here, we don't agree with each other, let's talk about it on Monday after the holiday, or next week. That way, at least, there is a higher chance you will have a better time. So I hope that you'll take those, those tips and we'll help you in the, in the coming holidays time. We also want to invite you. Um, uh, we have in two weeks from now, on Thursday, we, we have our one monthly mini workshop. Uh, it's an hour and a half in the evening, a Thursday evening, 6 to 7.30 in California time. And the topic this time are rituals of connection. Right. So we talked this month about routines and rituals in the family, but also in the relationship. It's really important to develop your own couple, your own relationship, uh, routines and rituals of how you connect with each other. And there's certain simple things you can do that don't take much time, but it creates actually a lot of impact, a lot of closeness. And so if you're interested, go to lovemidsimple.com forward slash mini workshop and find more information and, and, and we'll be happy to see you there. Yeah. Thank you so much. See you next Wednesday. See you next Wednesday at 1230. Bye.